Justice is equity and it knows no boundary. The litigants have genuine cause of action and George Fumi Asaulu is ever ready to dispense justice, ensuring amicable settlement. So how come she's not been paying this man out of the profit she's making? Well, yeah, it Explain it to her. It because as far as I'm concerned, that's an act of wickedness. Well, and she's trying to play smart. Well, that's the impression I'm having. She is fearless. Don't you ever, ever look at me straight in the eyes and say, wait. She is firm. I don't see I this see. man as somebody that will kill you. All he wants is for you to just perform conjugal rights. <laughs> I'm telling you. She is hilarious. The dispute is real and the judgment is binding. This is the Justice Court. Today on the Justice Court, a young entrepreneur with high hopes of growing his business, a credit facility that turned really messy and an arrogant customer who is not ashamed to be indebted to a small boy. The plaintiff, Nicholas Gift, is suing Pastor Donald for the sum of 700,000 Naira being the balance for goods he gave him on credit. The defendant, Pastor Donald Okoye, agreed this transaction occurred but said he has used the money meant for repayment to offset his brother-in-law's medical bill. He chose to save life over debt repayment but unfortunately, brother-in-law died. Nicholas needs money to save his business. He has run out of patience. All rise. Court in session. Honorable Judge Fumi Asaolu presiding. Please be seated. Your Honor, this case is between Nicholas and Okoye. Parties want to note. Thank you, Akin. You're welcome. Nicholas Gift. Yes, Your Honor. You are the plaintiff here. Eh? And you are suing Donald Okoye. For the sum of 700,000 naira. Yes, Your Honor. Can you tell me how you came about okay, this situation? It's all happened in happen 2015. Um, 2015, I was serving my Oga as. Uh, that's your boss? That's my boss. I was serving him in 2015 when I met Pastor Donald. So, Pastor Donald became our customer. Although I've been serving him before I met Pastor Donald, became our customer. What kind of business? I would sell um, motor tires. Okay. And tubes. Okay. So Pastor Donald became our customers, and we he started buying from us. So he was a very good customer of ours. So um, along the line, my organ started giving him goods on credit. Um, in other words, when he buy goods of maybe one million, he can make an instant payment of two hundred thousand, or sometimes three hundred, sometimes four hundred thousand thereabouts, because he was trustworthy. My organ trusts him. So I'm the one writing invoice, supplying goods for him. So this continues until I was being settled, 2018. Early 2018 to be precise, February. That was when my August settled me. I became a, um, my own boss. So I was really doing That's well. That's like gaining your freedom. Yes. Okay. I was on my own, selling the goods on my own, making the profit, everything is on my own. So I have my own shop. So I was doing the business. I was doing pretty well. So I managed to grow the business because anybody that's want to uh, use somebody to use as an example, they will use me as an example because I was really hardworking. Even him confirmed it. So it, it, it was um, lately 2018 that he approached me, that he likes me, he wants to encourage me, that he wants to start buying from me. I say, what happened to my yoga? I say, forget my yoga. He wants to make me grow as my yoga. So he told me this. I, I went back to my yoga. I said, look at what Pastor Donald told me. Already my yoga was not really happy. Uh, uh, with what Pastor Donald did. But he just locked up and told me, since Pastor Donald wants to be buying goods from me, he can go ahead. So it's Pastor Donald now start buying goods from me. But before, before he start, I told him that me and Moga, we are not the same. So for him to be buying goods from me, the, the duration of which he do uh, goods on credit with Moga, because sometimes it, it will take like two weeks, three weeks before he finish payments. And I told him, if, if you do that with me, uh, my business might go down. I might not survive. So what time frame did you give him? I to, uh, what I actually told him is highest one week okay. or at most, let's just say 10 days, you finish the payment and he agreed. So we start doing business. So we did the business 2018. 
we enter 2019, January 2019. He was he was my best customer, to be frank. So he we were always doing, paying up on time. He was paying up on time. So we continued the business January 2019, February 2019. But um, March 2019, I supplied goods worth of 932,000 to him. So for which I have the invoice here. So when I supplied these goods to him, okay, let me have it. That's the invoice of the product I supplied to him. So I supplied these goods to him. He made an instant payment of 132,000. So which I wrote it down. So on 11th of that, that same month, which is March 2019, he, he paid, he came to my shop and gave me 100,000. So altogether, what he pays was 232,000 naira. Okay. Was, this is exactly the payment that okay. he made. Return it to me. You need this one? No, it's okay. okay. So he paid altogether 232,000 naira. Out of 932. Yes, out of 900. So what is remaining is 700,000 naira. So ever since then, I waited for him because I knew him. He was a very good customer of mine. Um, that's um, March, I did not call him. April, I did not call him. But the next month, I was worried for my business is already going down. I was, I was going to people, buying, collecting goods on credit. And he never called me. I was so annoyed. I called him. He's not picking my calls. I said, what is happening? I went back to my Oga. See, look at what Pastor Donald is doing to me. My Oga said, if I have any business, if I know any business I do with Pastor Donald, I should go and settle it. I was annoyed. I was confused. Honestly, I was frustrated. I don't know what to do. So I was, I was really confused. So I was calling Finding a way to reach Pastor Donald, there's no way to reach him. On June, to be precise, on June, Pastor Donald have the demerits to come to the market, to Autopass, that's where we are. Come to Autopass, sneak to Autopass without my notice, to sort for goods. I was in my shop, I was really um, helping my junior brother to teach him the business. He was the one that sought Pastor Donald. He came to me, I was writing invoice, came to me that he saw Pastor Donald in the market. I, w I, w I was so furious, I left everything I was doing, I rushed back to go and meet Pastor Donald. Look, Luckily for him, I met Pastor Donald in front of other importers sorting for goods. I was surprised. I met him. I was asking him, Pastor Donald, why are you not picking my call? He was even shocked that I saw him. When I, I approached him, he was, he was so afraid. He said, Pastor Donald, why are you not picking my calls? Why haven't you paid the, the balance up to now? Go to my show, we we'll see what is happening. He was giving me some stupid excuses. Some stupid excuses that you have the demerit to come to the market. You are owing me 700,000 and I'm suffering. They just settled me 2018. What do you want me to do? And he was leaving me. I, I now held his clothes inside the market. So it was at the process that um, task force that in the market now took me and him so to the office. They, they took me and him to the office to settle the case. So when, when we got to there, we met the chairman of the market, which is Autopass Trade Fair, precisely. That's where we are staying. So he told Pastor Donald, he asked us what happened. We actually explained what happened. So he asked Pastor Donald, how do you want to pay this payment? Which time do you want? He was talking nonsense. He was not saying anything that is, that is accurate. So they, they not, they, that made them to give him two months to pay me my money. Ever since then, Pastor Donald disappeared. I went to them. They are not, they are not even giving me any. He doesn't have a shop within, the, within trade. Field. No, no, he doesn't have okay. a shop. What he does is when he come, come and collect, we have um, customers all over Lagos. I know of that. He have Badagri, Ikoti, everywhere in Lagos. So... When they so he doesn't the have case, a shop, he just buys and sells. Yes, and supply. That's and what he does. That's what he does. So Pastor Donald, after they have settled the case, they, 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 they now, uh, we, we are not looking for Pastor Donald. Pastor Donald is nowhere to be found. I was confused. When I go to them, they are not giving me anything. Go everywhere. They are not, I'm not, I, I, was, I was really frustrated because I was going down. Okay, just a young boy that was just settled recently. I was really, really going down. I don't know what to do. Not until I met um, um, Loki. You know, they, uh, he now introduced me, to introduce me to this place. So how did you find him? You said he disappeared. That's the last thing I heard, like, you were looking for him. Mm. After the, the time you went to see the chairman, you said he disappeared. Yes. So how did you find him? It, it, it was really um, a brother to him because I, I managed to trace him. I got his contact because I, I find out that he, he changed his line. Okay. Yes, I managed to get his contact. Then reporting to them, it was people that, uh, that was here that called him, they now us. appear. He, was, he did not even know the reason why they called him. It was the day that we, they, uh, um, uh, one of the people here invited him, and he appeared. That was why I managed to find him. Okay. So, Leonard, what happened? Yeah. Thank you for this opportunity, opportunity for you 
to understand my own point because I see what is happening as a product of his inexperience in business. Actually, he is a small boy. Yeah, he is a small no, boy because no, if he's mature, wait, wait, order. Wait. Let me tell you one thing. It's not about age seniority, seniority of age that you are here. What brought you to court? It's not for me to ascertain whether you are older than him or he's older than you. The reason you are here is because he's claiming you are owing him. So all I need to hear from you is the circumstance under which you came about owing him 700,000 naira. If actually you are owing him, I need to know. Okay. I've only heard his own side. That's one. Then secondly, I need to understand why you disappeared or why he could not reach you or why you did not reach out to him as he claimed, I have not heard your side. Okay. As he claimed, yes. after you took the supply okay. and you only paid 232,000 naira. So those are the issues I want you to address. Okay. In order to resolve the issue on ground. Sorry, yeah. Okay, I got to, he has, he has told the Honorable Court how he got to know me, so there's no point going through that. The fact remains that, yes, we've been doing business, and um, I have my, my uh, um, 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 bills and my, my documents to show that we've been doing business very well, I've, I've, and I've, I've been cordial with him. But to be frank, on the on, on 8th of March 2019, I picked goods from him, worth 932,000, which he has also confirmed here. And on that faithful date, I dropped 132,000 to him. Because normally, even the highest I've picked from him was 2 million, and I did not owe him a dime. I have every document to prove to that, to prove that. I have, I have several documents to prove that. Now, I picked these goods from him, but something happened. I paid him. Before then, my sister had been coming complaining that she has an issue. And this issue is a, an issue of life and death. The husband was hospitalized, to be frank. He went to uh, um, um, this um, dialyzer at um, Oshodi. He was dialyzed, was having kidney issue. I just waved it. He has, she has been telling me this thing since, but I just, I have been bouncing it. But I will not say unfortunately, I will say fortunately, the day she came for the third time, that was the day a customer brought, one of my customers brought 550,000 from, from um, what I gave to him accumulatively. I still wasn't crying then. Tell me that, please, if I should, can just help the husband to leave. For crying out loud, this man was dying. We're talking about life and death, and I know that definitely they will pay me back the money if he recovers. Okay, fine. And I said, okay, please. When and what is the duration? She said once the husband is okay, that definitely the husband's company is going to um, pay back. They are going to from her from his um, what they call it medical whatever. That right now they cannot foot the bill. I said okay. I tried my best and assisted, hoping that they will give me back the money. But unfortunately, unfortunately, at Lutz, the man died. Now that is not a reason for me not to pay him. I have been trying my best. I called him. I explained to him, look at the circumstances I found myself. Even in the Bible, Jesus was accused of healing on, 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 on the Sabbath day, which he's not supposed to do. Life, life and, and, and material thing, which one is more important? I consider life, for, which I explained to him. Now, he's telling me that. He's saying, telling the honorable God that I have not been calling him. I have not been picking his call. It's a fabricated fallacy. He did this just to debase me. And I wouldn't take that from him. It's a complete lie. Now, on the... Um, June, Jennifer March, if we make on June, I went back to the market. Why I went to the buy market was because I now said it's high time I bounce back. He was not even picking my calls, so he's already saying that I was not calling him. He was not picking my calls, he was angry, shouting at me, accusing me of making him not to get married. Can you imagine? You? If, your, if your fiance loves you, your fiance will understand that there are circumstances, at times there are ups and downs. How can you now say that it's because of me that you didn't get married? Okay, fine, that one aside, okay. Now, I told him, I told, he, he has never been picking my call. I now went back to the market, trying to put myself back together. Because there are other things I do, but other things I do can only cater for my essentials. It cannot even cater for my luxury or basics. Okay, fine. Went back to the market, made one or two contacts. Why I said he's a spot boy was because when he saw me in the market, he should have understood that my coming to the market was just to put my feet back together. But his bigotry attitude, 
What did he do? He depends into the poverty kingdom, the same thing with me. And I truly blame myself for that. He held me. And even the man that was supposed to give me some goods, because of that, and the task force were like, the, the drama there was just too much. Everybody said, oh, just hold your peace. I lost a lot on that fateful day. As I'm talking to you right now, I cannot even go to the market. Now, he's now saying that I changed my line. I did this. I ran away. I... Let me ask you, what do you want me to do? No, you don't have to face him. Okay, sorry. No, you don't answer that question. You don't. You, you, you never asks a question from you. I don't have okay. the right to ask. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I asked you. I'm sorry. You saw the way he addressed the court. Yes. And the same way I wanted to address the court. I'm sorry. I have not interrupted you at all. I'm sorry. So just keep on. Okay, Let now, yeah. He, he has stated his own side. Yes. So it's so, for you to react. So my plan was this. Assuming he was, he was, he was matured enough, when he heard that I was in the market, what he would have done was to just wait. Let me negotiate what I'm negotiating. When I come out with a goose or whatever, he can now hijack the goose or do whatever to start or we arrive at a compromise. But making everything to be zero-based, what do you want me to do? And that is my source of, will I say, income that is reasonable. As I'm talking to you right now, I'm trying to put myself together. So he now coming to the court saying that I am a fugitive is completely wrong. And I will not take it because my egotism was but, also at stake on that. Wait. Way. To, you, you are denying that. Order. That, but at the same time, you are not denying that you are owing him 700 000. No, I'm not denying that fact. All right. I'm not denying that okay. fact. I'm not denying that fact. All right, then. So the, the next thing was I, I, a call came and I was told to come. When I now... Ha, and, huh, oh God, I, could, I, could, I remember this same person that was saying, that was a time he called and said that he was going to take me to his village shrine. No? He has done all those things. Still, they have searched in the realm of the spirit and, and know that I am not guilty. So he's now bringing me here, but God knows that as soon as I have the fund, I will have given it to him. The plaintiff, Nicholas Gift, said the 700,000 Naira balance is not a gift to the defendant and this indebtedness is killing his business. Pastor Donald alleged that the plaintiff's attack on his person in public debased his egoism and made him lose out on other business transactions. The brouhaha is escalating. How will George Fumi intervene? Are you true? Yes. You are true? Yeah. Now, I'll start with it. Always go into an agreement. Let the two parties sign. Let them stay the time and the format they are going to pay back. Yes, you had an agreement. It's an oral contract too. As to repayment. I mean, payment for the goods supplied. Then always ask whoever is buying on credit to bring a guarantor. I always say that. Let them bring a guarantor. Let the guarantor investigate that the guarantor is capable to stand in for the amount that is involved. Then, you took a high risk with the amount of money involved. If you know that if you supply a particular um, quantity of goods on credit and if you don't get paid on time it's going to affect your business you shouldn't you should not but you are just coming up so at times that's the way life is you learn I'm sure you can't run into this kind of issue again but you learn the hard way and you can see his attitude even towards you and towards the money. Look, let me tell you. You are supposed to be a man of God. I hope you understand what I mean. You know, I didn't say you are a man of God. I said you are supposed to be a man of God. And as a man of God, humility is number one. You are too arrogant. You are owing, and you are the one that is being arrogant at the same time. Over what? You should be ashamed. You are calling me a small boy. You are owing a small boy money. 
and you are proud to be flaunting that all over the place, shouting and screaming over what? Somebody should be begging? I don't understand where all this is coming from. I'm totally appalled at your response. You are older. You should be more matured. You are owing. You disappeared. He saw you. You expected to be rubbing your back and be happy with you. From the attitude I can see on you, you do worse if you are in his shoes. The way you are walking up yourself. What was your pride in all this? And you are quoting Bible out of tune. Everybody is laughing at you. I don't understand you. I don't. You need to calm down. In the courtroom, a pastor owing with arrogance, and now, you never made him a priority. You use the money as far as I'm concerned for your family matter. Regardless of whatever it is. We are talking about life and death. May the man's soul rest in peace. I sure wish him well. But it's not his fault. And despite everything, you claim to have given the man 550,000 naira. Which is not even up to the 700,000 naira you are owing him. So if you have given 550,000 naira, and you are, you are, you, as you are standing here, you, you are able to tell me that I've given him 150. Is the balance that I wanted to give him that I gave out to this man. I could still reason it out. But you never ever said anything along that line. But the bottom line is, you are owing him. What effort have you made after you were taken to the chairman's office to offset, if not all, out of what you are owing him? as a man of God. How do you intend to pay the 700,000 naira? By installment or once? If it's by installment, when do you want to start? How much do you want to be paying? At what time? That is all. This is um, 2020. And um, from the look of things, I just don't know because I'm, just, I'm still trying to like, you know, put things in order. I just wanted to make it easy for you. There's no problem. After the break, George Fumi rules. This is my judgment. Judgment for the plaintiff for the sum of 700,000 naira. The defendant is to pay the plaintiff 700,000 naira. Judgment for the plaintiff. All right. Have you been cheated or have a dispute and want justice? Don't take laws into your hands. Log on to www.thejusticecourt.com and submit your case. The judgment was, uh, it was really fair. The only thing that I know that since the judge have precise on the case, Pastor Donald you don't have any other option than to pay me my money because I'm already going down. The meant was fair. I still need to work on my temper because the way it is now can really do anything to him, honestly speaking. He can do anything to get my money. But since the judge has precise on the case, I leave the, I leave the matter to them because they know the best way to handle it. I can't believe that I did this. Maybe the way he brought me here, I was surprised. But then I need to work on it. I'm a, I'm a young guy that is growing in business. Um, to be frank, I made a very big mistake. I think that's the reason why my Oga did not really intervene. So to other people that also do business on credit, as the judge has said, um, if you want to go into um, um, buying and selling, which is on credit, you have to come into agreement. The person has to bring guarantor. Or better still, the person has to pay the reasonable amount of money before you risk goes to the person. So if he can pay me that money, definitely I will see the risk good, but not on credit anymore. After debasing me, Debasing my egotism, I don't think I'll do anything with him again. 